Hey, it's another indoor video, and this time I brought toys. Uh, this right here is a tone control, as in an audio tone control, kind of like a grandfather to an equalizer or something of that nature. And this one was manufactured by Radiart Corporation at some point between 1924 and 1927, which means that it may be 100 years old. Uh, well, it's still 2023 as I record this, but pretty close to the end. Hopefully you'll forgive me. This one I have not opened up. I bought this about 20 years ago on eBay for $5. Nobody else was bidding on it. I thought it would be a cool project box to build something else inside of, and I just never got to that. But I figured now that it's potentially 100 years old, we should investigate it and, and take a look at it together. Now, being an analog tone control, what it's going to do is interact with a signal that's being amplified. So this wouldn't have existed in, for example, someone's home audio system at that point. It's pretty unlikely. Uh, more likely this would have existed in a movie theater where they were projecting a film and then they were amplifying a separate soundtrack and that soundtrack would have gone through a tube amplifier that's mounted on a horn loudspeaker. This has a couple little paddles on it. These would have sandwiched underneath the vacuum tubes on that tube amplifier and interacted with the signal in some way. Uh, now in terms of analog tone controls, I know of a lot of different ways to do this just using passive components. Most of them involve some network of resistors, capacitors, and potentiometers. That means that the capacitor is a reactive electronic device that responds to frequency. The resistors are kind of for stabilizing that, and then the potentiometer would be for controlling exactly where you are on that scale. And this may be a single potentiometer, or it may be two that are mounted on the same axis. Either one of those could have been done. Maybe even more than that. We'll find out. Uh, since this thing is about 100 years old, I figure it's probably the oldest one on YouTube. We'll take a look inside of it together. Uh, it does appear that you can remove the bottom of it by prying the bottom off, although it also has this little riveted on space here that says fuse. So there would have been a fuse in this in addition to the other passive components. The model number on this is JA, that's Juliet Alpha. And again, it was made by the Radiart Corporation of Cleveland, Ohio. And as far as I can tell, they were made between 1924 and 1927. The paddles are mounted on this kind of wire that almost has a modern feeling um, vinyl type insulation on it and then a bunch of really badly frayed cloth insulation on top of that. Um, so I don't think this is really a museum piece. I did find online that there is a museum that contains one of these. Uh, the one that's in that museum seems to be in slightly worse condition than mine. But either way, it's a good way of preserving this type of equipment just so that people have an idea of where it all started. Uh, anyway. Let's go ahead and bust it open and see what's inside. I'll try to be careful. So it identifies this as Potter, P-O-T-T-E-R, one-tenth MFD, which means one-tenth of one microfarad. And so that pretty clearly means that this is a capacitor. This one here is a bit of a mystery because it's extremely heavy. I can feel the, the weight of it and the density of it is where most of everything is in here. The weird part with that is it is kind of sealed off in here. And at the bottom of it, it has this panel which is labeled Fuse, F-U-S-E. And so I don't know how that's going to work out. Let me see if I can get something done on that.
Well, it looks like as if this fuse was a bit of a red herring. There's not actually a fuse under there. It's just this black potting material. And uh, that seems to be pretty much solid through there. And so I think that that probably means that this is an inductor. Um, it wouldn't really make much sense for it to be anything other than that. I had initially thought that this tone control might be of the sort where they're just simply cutting treble and not anything else. But I think this is probably going to end up being an inductor. And so the inductor probably is heavy because it has some sort of a core. And then it has that potting material possibly for temperature regulation or just vibration resistance. And then of course it has this little capacitor on the other side and then a potentiometer to sweep between the two of those things. And it really is uh, apparently as simple as that. So this ends up being a considerably more simple design than I expected. I had thought it would be a few more parts than that actually. Uh, but what we have is a circuit that comes in from one of those paddles and that, that of course is going to remain parallel to the amplifier circuit that it's a component of, and, and that certainly will have a reactive relationship with each other, but it's going to come in here and branch off into two directions. That would come over here and join into this capacitor, and then on the other side, it would join into this inductor. We don't know the value of this inductor. We know that this is one-tenth of one microfarad. It says so on the casing. And then from here, this would come back over and it would go into a potentiometer. This part of the circuit would just go back off to the other paddle and that would go to your vacuum tube. So an incredibly simple circuit. Um, not sure why I expected more from something that was manufactured at that point. They certainly knew more about electrical principles, but this may have been enough to get the job done. So this little fuse text right here on the bottom panel, I don't know if that was like a practical joke from some guy a hundred years ago and it took that long for the punchline to drop, in which case you got me, uh, or if it was just because they used this chassis for some other purpose and that happened to be where a fuse would have been mounted. Um, I have no idea. Now I had originally purchased this about 20 years ago and I had thought about putting like modern solid state electronics inside of it and making a little home audio amplifier because it's got a fine knob to use as a volume knob and it's got kind of a cool look to it. Uh, but these days I don't really even have room to have a proper like showpiece audio system so that's not going to happen. Uh, I had also thought about just putting other stuff inside of it. Um, back at that point of course like Raspberry Pis didn't exist. YouTube didn't exist back then so um, I didn't really put a lot of time and effort into coming up with other ideas. It just kind of sat on a shelf. Uh, but I don't want it to sit on a shelf forever. Now, I had originally offered this um, last year to three different other content creators on YouTube who have much larger platforms than me, and their kind of bread and butter is to take apart electronics and talk about electronic circuitry and share novel or antique designs just with their audience. And uh, I'm not going to name any names because I don't want to shame anybody or get anyone weirded out or anything like that. But uh, one of them didn't reply to me. Um, two of them did reply to me, and, and they were very friendly, but neither of them expressed interest in this, even though I was offering to send it on my dime to them. Uh, so, you know, I figured, okay, well, I'll, I'll just go ahead and tear it down then. And uh, that's why I, I went ahead and, and tore it apart for this. Now, it's still, of course, complete. I'll have to re-rivet this guy back into place um, or come up with some other... Uh, you know, non-destructive solution to that. But the next question then is, what do I do with this? Um, I could put a Raspberry Pi in it, I, I guess. I mean, that's a thing that would fit inside of it, although I don't have a particular application for a Raspberry Pi right now that I'm not already doing. Uh, I could, again, put a modern amplifier inside of it as a chassis and play around with it. I doubt that this would still function even if I figured out a way to mate it with modern electronics. I doubt it would still function. The inductor is undoubtedly still in good condition because it has no reason to experience age, but the capacitor is probably dried out or otherwise non-functional. I don't have the tools to test that. Um, and the potentiometer, I would imagine, is scratchy as heck. So if you have any ideas for what you think I should do with this next, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you're someone who knows a lot about tube electronics or antique electronics and you have anything you'd like to share with me or the other people in the audience, let me know. Thanks.